What is up everybody? How's it going? Hope you guys are doing well. Today I want to give my review of Spider-Man 2 and discuss my thoughts and opinions on it. And yes, I was half right, half wrong. I said I wasn't going to be buying a full-priced new video game this year, but the thing is it was on sale for $44. So I decided to pick it up. Why not? I won't see probably a sale till next year in June of this game, so I decided to pick it up for now and play it. And I thought it was good. So I'll be sharing my thoughts and opinions, and I think I'll give my grade overall. I think it's an 8.5 or 9 out of 10. It's a really good game, but it did have some flaws. Um, and I will be discussing spoilers about the game, so if you guys don't want to have spoilers about this, please click off. I don't really care what you do, but if you don't want to listen to spoilers, don't listen to this. So, the story started off really good. Um, started off with Spider-Man and Miles Morales in the classroom. And let me first say this took place after the 2018 and Miles Morales games, so it took place after events of those games. So, basically we get back to the classroom and Sandman attacks and there's a whole battle and then eventually we finally meet Harry and I thought that was a really really amazing moment right there I thought um, having Harry finally introduced into the game because we heard snippets about it that he was gone in Europe on a vacation whatever but realized he was sick at the end of Spider-Man 2018 and the symbiote got to him but we'll discuss that in a bit and so it was really cool to beat him the memories of him and Peter at the high school um, because they were best friends and so it was really cool just to have hanging out with them um, especially with MJ and then we learned out the symbiote, symbiote suit um, got to him and that he um, likes fighting with it but it kind of grows um, it transfers to Peter and then Peter grows rageful and then it transfers back to Harry um, and so it's this, this whole transfer match between the game I just didn't know which one I was going to fight um, personally, I think there's a lot of plots going on with this game because you had the symbiote, um, dashing on the Peter, Harry, and MJ. And I'm just like, this is crazy. Like, this is all the, that's like the main story stuff, but it should just be with Harry. Um, I, I feel like, and then he had all this Craven stuff as the main story as well, trying to, to hunt the symbiote. But the thing is, it's kind of complicated because you have two separate stories fighting between um, the focus of the main story. And I didn't really like that as much. It was really hard to concentrate on what the true battle was. And so it was very confusing trying to focus on, okay, well, should I care about Kraven more? Should I care about Venom more? Which one should I actually fully do? And so that was the thing. Um, and I just didn't really like it as much. And so it really threw me off through the story because I was like, okay, I don't know which one to care about more. Again, I went through the story. I didn't really level up as much. Um, I think the true hard boss fight I had trouble with was the Scream um, version where it took over MJ. And that was a hard one because you can't really get close and fight. You have to like keep your distance and just whip them up and stuff like that. And so that was a kind of a hard boss fight. Otherwise it was really, really cool. Um, and so that's kind of like the story. It was kind of emotional, kind of wasn't. I didn't really have enough time to invest into Harry. Um, we saw a lot of him in the 2018 version where we heard a lot of him in the, all the research projects. But it was cool to actually see him in person. Um, in terms of his coma slash death, um, I didn't really have too much emotion to it. Um, I thought Peter was going to die in this game, to be honest. I thought he was going to have an emotional death. So that's when, when he got stabbed, I was like, oh, is he going to die? No, I don't want him to die. And then the symbiote transferred over to him. And so I kind of saw that kind of saw it coming, kind of didn't. Um, it was fine. But overall, I thought the story was pretty good. It, it lacked some stuff. Like I said, it had like many different plot points in one uh, between like MJ writing a story or her being the true journalist and Harry and his problems. And so it was like all mixed together. And I felt like I wanted one cohesive story and plot point through the story, you know. And so that was the story. Let's talk about all the side content. There is a lot of side content content in this game um between side missions projects um 
and stuff like that. Now, would I say it's more than past Spider-Man games? I don't know yet. Um, there's, but there's a lot of stuff. Um, because you got Mysterio, you got the symbiote bases, you got the um, flame side content missions, you got the Prowler stuff, you got the um, drone missions, you got the spider bots. There's a lot of stuff going on that you had to collect in this game. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot. Um, some of it was kind of tough, too. I really hated the uh, symbiote bases because you had to protect this point especially when you had two and you had to bounce from one to the other i really hated that and it was so 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 annoying um it was reminded me of the god of war 2018 when they went to Helheim and you had to protect the two fires, you know, you had to bounce back and you had, it was a whole matter of timing and you had to not make sure like one goes without the other. And so it was really, really hard. I hated those so much, but that's, I have to say that didn't really make sense either because at the end of the story, you eliminated the symbiote, you eliminated every trace of him. And yet those bases remain all the, um, crimes where they stick around in the streets, they still remain. It just didn't make sense. They expected you to play through it, th through the story and um, take those bases down while you're doing a story, but I didn't. I, and so afterwards, I was like, okay, we got rid of all the traces of S Venom and Symbiote. Yay, we're done! Wait. There's bases here and there and there and there and there. It, what? It doesn't make sense, you know? So it just threw me off, and it didn't really... I didn't really like it as much, just because it it just doesn't make sense. If you eliminate it, you should eliminate every trace of it. So, I don't know. That's kind of like one of the flaws I didn't like in the game, is that once you beat the story, stuff still remains. And so I get the Marco stuff. Yeah, sure, his mind is fractured. Um, and so... And Craven's goons still remain, and then, so, and then, so that's what the symbiote base is. You also had all the um, drone stuff, which was cool, flying throughout the city, um, trying to capture the drone, hack it. Um, spider bots were kind of annoying. Um, the the stereo missions were kind of annoying too, because um, it was just a time thing, and you had challenges connected to it. It was kind of like um, in the past game. I forgot. What, that social media influencer, I forgot her name, um, but you know who I'm talking about, the most annoying character in Miles Morales, and even in Spider-Man. It was so, so annoying to play as them um, and do those missions, but it was fine. Um, otherwise, the rest of the side con content was good. Um, I remember I finished everything, but the only thing I had to do was upgrade all the suits um, and unlock them. And so, in order to do that, I had to get find tech parts. And luckily, there's, like, crimes still available, and there's still um, chests you can find everywhere. So, I was just grinding for about an hour or two, just trying to find all those and unlock them. Um, it wasn't too hard of a grind. Um, you just go from base to, um, place to place to place to place, stop from here, there, there, crime, there, 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 crime, um, and basically repeat. And it's because there's really no post-game stuff, you can't replay missions or anything like that. And so overall, um, the side content was good, but it was lacking, and it just didn't make sense in some parts. Um, but it was fun overall. It had some um, cool Easter eggs from other Spider-Man lore and everything like that. And so moving on, um, talking about the actual gameplay, um, I was really, really excited about this. Um, it had a lot of cool, unique stuff. It brought some moves from the old games. It brought some um, nice elements from it. Um, and then it introduced really cool mechanics. Um, I think it, they really, really went in deep into the gameplay of the Sonic Booms, you know? Um, kind of like how um, you saw like the bells in Spider-Man 3. Um, they really, really advance that feature and they'll be like okay let's bring it to this game where you're going to be finding symbionts you have to find a way to stop them so they brought them back and they finally figured out what to do um and that was you activate it and it freaks freaks them out um otherwise uh, the moves were good um I really, really liked the um, symbiote moves. That was really, really cool. Um, Miles had some good stuff. He brought some of the old moves back with him. Um, they introduced the web 
web wings. It was really, really cool. Um, the thing is, I wish they had a, um, something where you could just glide forever. Um, kind of, now, I, they kind of introduced the mechanic kind of like in Just Cause 3. But the thing is, I would love if they had it where um, you can pull yourself and then you have more momentum everywhere you go, you know? And they do have some mechanics, but I guess the, the point is they you're not supposed to glide forever. One of the gameplay mechanics, too, that they changed was the healing system. I personally like the old healing system. Every hit you take, you gain, um, I forgot what the points for, I guess you call it, but when there's a different term. Anyways, mana, I guess you can call it. Anyways, you would use that to heal yourself. You wouldn't have to wait for a bar, you know? The thing is, you have let's say this is the bar and it goes from zero to 100. The thing is it, it, you have to wait for the whole bar to fill up to a hundred. Then it would use it to um, heal yourself rather in the old games. You can go to 60% um, and heal yourself and then it would um, heal whatever percentage you had. But this one you had to wait for the whole bar to fill up to do your health. And I was I didn't really like that feature because it was like if you're in a, a tense battle and you have like multiple enemies hitting you, but you're also hitting back. The thing is, I would love to heal at the instance. I don't want to wait um, for uh, for me just to punch a bunch of enemies then heal. It just doesn't make sense. I like the old system a lot better. Um, and I, people are like, oh, it gives you a chance to heal and fight. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. But I like the old system better. It was, it was fair and it was easy for me. Um, so I didn't really like that, that change at all. That wasn't really one, that's probably my least favorite thing of the game. I, I hated that feature overall. It was, it just didn't make any sense. Um, and then what else? Um, so that was the gameplay. The graphics were amazing. Um, it pretty much had the same graphics as Miles Morales. Um, not too much to notice or um any huge differences and so that was kind of like what i thought of it and then in terms of the actual um gameplay on the streets it was really really cool to see the density of the streets um it felt like they had the same amount of um pedestrians and everything like that um the cars of course were um there was more cars to simulate more traffic in new york um, I felt like they went all out on this one where they had the um, art everywhere around the city. They had more art on buildings and I felt like they had a lot of the designs come in from people and they were like, okay, place on this building, this building, this building, this building, this building, this building. Um, so it's cool to see all the art and see all of it. Um, in terms of interactions, I really liked how they had some homages from, um, what's his name? Jefferson and Davis, he had a memorial. They had a trophy of Finn and Miles, um, kind of like um, trophy, you know, um, from when they won the science competition. And then they had, um, some, uh, of course, the graves. They had um, a lot of stuff. And then they had some stuff with Sandman, like sand everywhere, destroyed buildings, and stuff like that was really cool. They kept some stuff in the story um, damaged after the game. Um, what did it, I, What I really liked, what they should have kept, is that there's two flaws in the game in 2018 that I wish they would still make fun of. I know in the remastered version of Spider-Man, um, they had the people in the boats. You know how they were un, untextured? Um, in the remastered version, they were like, oh, you miss us with a sticky note placed on their chest. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. I wish they did something like that. Um, same with like the, um, the, the marriage proposal thing um, on that one building in 2018. That was a really cool Easter egg. I really wish they would have kept that. Um, getting rid of the, like, the 9-11 buildings homage was pretty cool. Um, I didn't really mind as well. I didn't really pay attention to that. Um, I still haven't even checked those buildings out yet. But I wish they would have kept some of the old Easter eggs from the old games um, and just place it here. Um, one of the things I really, really liked was the ability to explore wherever you want in terms of the boundaries, of course. So you have a circle and you have two different islands on both sides with a C in the middle. Um, and it was really, really cool that you can go explore both cities and literally go in the middle. 
um, to the raft and everywhere. Before in the game, you couldn't really do that. You were hindered by only one side. Um, so now you get to explore more. In Miles, you get to actually explore the place where you fought at the end of the game um, at that science fair thing. Um, so it was really, really cool to see that. Um, that was one of my best parts is that I could freely free roam within the boundaries of the game rather than hindering. Now, sure, there are some places out of bounds, but those were never intended to be explored. But um, since it's truly on the PS5, you have more power, and therefore you can explore more places. And so it was just better to explore overall because there's a lot to do. And um, so that's kind of like my thoughts on the game. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, the suits, I guess you, I could talk a little bit about the suits. Um, I really, really liked how they did the suits this time because they had suits that you can unlock, sure, but you have different styles for the suits, something you didn't have in previous games. And so it was really, really cool to unlock a suit and then try on a different style. It's really, really cool to see that rather than having all the styles as different in one suit, you know? Um, and so it's really cool to see that change. Um, and I think they did a really, really good job on the suits and it, um, has some ability be, to be improved in the future. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's probably my reasons why I gave it like 8.5, 9 out of 10. It wasn't a perfect game by any means. Like it had a lot of flaws, healing system, the story didn't really make sense, the side content, um, they had a lot to be improved on, but unfortunately, um, it locked in some areas, and so therefore I can't give it a perfect score. It was a good game, don't get me wrong. Um, it has that Spider-Man flair, um, but I felt like they missed the ball on some of the marks I missed in the first game, and they could have been improved on in this game. And so um, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have played Spider-Man or just have any thoughts about it, um, please let me know. I personally like the game. Um, is it a perfect game? No, no. Um, but if you want a good Spider-Man adventure, and that's why I got it for 40 bucks. I mean, um, I was like, I'm not going to be playing 80 hours plus this, but it's it's fun to play the game. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot, a lot of stuff to do in the game, just free roaming. Um, again, I already platinum the game, so I already played it. But I, once I have New Game Plus, I'll be playing the story again, taking a lot of photos everywhere. Um, I have more on Coney Island. I have more in terms of the Mysterio um, bases. Um, and there's a lot to explore. And so I still have a lot to do, but it's still a fun game. Um, I'm glad I picked it up. Um, and I, I kind of don't regret it buying for 40 Now for 80 sure, I'd be like, okay, I don't. I didn't spend too much time with it. I, I kind of regretted that buying Miles Morales because it's down to like 20 bucks right now when I bought it for like 80. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I could have waited. But that was like when the PS5 launched and it was big, big back then, you know? And so, um, yeah, it was a really, really good story. Um, though it wasn't the best, good gameplay. I know I'm repeating myself, but um, I'm going to wrap up this video. Um, so I will see you guys later. I'm going to continue playing more games. I have a lot more. Um, I'm going to be playing EA games. I think I'm playing Need for Speed Unbound right now. Um, some uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I'm playing some of that. Um, and in the new year, I'll be playing a lot more games as well. And so with lots of love and respect, I will see you guys later. Hopefully you're doing well. And I'll see you next time. Bye.